This week's experiment, we're going to look at dialysis, which is going to be an application of solutions. So a couple of terms, um, as you read through the introduction, make sure you read the whole thing, um, and a couple of terms to think about. Um, one is diffusion, and diffusion is going to be when molecules move in a direction that lowers the concentration. So in other words, we've talked about this being going from high solute concentration to low solute concentration. Diffusion is when these little solute particles start to move to lower concentration. Another term that we've talked about with solutions is osmosis. And osmosis is the same idea except that it's water molecules moving. Um, and so the water molecules are always going to move in a way that they can equalize the concentrations and so water will move in the opposite direction of the solutes. Um, so dialysis is done when our kidneys aren't working um, to the level that they should be. And there's a couple of different types of dialysis. Um, you can Google them to learn more. Um, but essentially in dialysis, we're gonna use solutions um, to clean our blood out of water and of solutes. Um, and our blood is a solution also. So one of the words you'll hear me using is dialysate. And if we can look down here at the picture at the bottom, um, if we've got blood, flowing through the dialyzing machine. So if my pink is my blood here, here is my dialysate. And so you can see that the blood has a moment where it's adjacent to the dialysate. And that's gonna be what we're mimicking today is putting some fake blood next to dialysate and seeing where the solutes are able to move. So if we flip the page here, um, here are the solutes that we're gonna be looking at today. And in particular, we're gonna look at the ones that are easiest to characterize or see. So that's gonna be chloride, glucose, and starch. We will not be looking at sodium, although we could make some inferences from our work about what sodium's doing. Um, we will be using the same tests as we did in the last lab to look for chloride. So we'll be um, reacting chloride with silver. Um, to make silver chloride, which is a white solid. We'll also be doing Benedict's test to test for glucose. And if you recall, we had the different colors last week from Benedict's test. This was more like a spectrum between blue and then red solid. So you may or may not see these different colors. It might just be more and more and more brick red. And then for the starch, we'll be doing um, a test called an iodine test. Um, so Benedict's test for sugar, iodine for starch and silver nitrate um, for the chloride. So those are the solutes in the tests that we're gonna be looking at today. Um, on the prepare page, you're gonna make sure that you read the whole entire lab, okay? Um, and you will be filling in ahead of class um, this picture based on the pictures that I'm gonna draw here in a minute. During lab, you will fill in these three sections, the solutions um, as you observe them in class. So moving on, um, you have more prepare questions here. Make sure those are all done before you come to class. And our big question of the week is, what chemicals can move across a dialysis tube membrane? And so that would be between the blood and the dialysate. Um, and which direction can they move? Can they move in? Can they move out? Look for evidence of either of those or both, okay? Um, in your equipment, your instructor will go over all of your equipment with you in lab, but I just want to highlight a couple of things. Um, when you see this M over V, this is the same as W over V, so this is mass over volume or weight over volume, so just recognize those can be used interchangeably. Um, the red food coloring is optional, so we can dye our blood to look red or not, depends on what your instructor wants to do. Um, and then a couple of just terms over here. So there's these six 150 millimeter medium test tubes. Anywhere you see medium today, those are your large test tubes. So we're just gonna call large test tubes and small test tubes throughout the day. So anywhere it says medium can be large. And then in addition, um, you see distilled water here. We also have available to us in lab deionized water. And so just recognize that those mean the same thing for our lab experience today. All right, so as you flip through your lab experiment, um, you'll see safety notes, being careful with Benedict's solution in particular because it's basic, so rinse well if you spill that. 
Um, test two or part C, anything with silver like it has the last couple of labs needs to go into the designated waste container. And then as far as parts go in your experiment, um, the first part is going to be an instructor demo. I'll draw that out in a moment with sodium bicarbonate. You will start here um, in part B, okay, with six large test tubes. You'll set it up as it describes here. And so that will be your dialysis. And then part C will be identification, or another word we've used for that is characterization. So analyzing or analysis, analyzing what happened during this whole dialysis portion here, okay? Um, Couple things to point out, 400 mil beaker, you may be using a 600 mil beaker instead if we have that. Um, you're gonna start with the hot plate on high and then lower it once the water boils. So a little typo there. Um, again, anywhere you've seen medium test tubes, remember we're just calling those large. Um, you're gonna have a lot of test tubes out as you can see in this picture here. So six big ones six small ones and six more small ones. So you'll actually be borrowing a few of those small test tubes as well. Um, continuing, here's your different tests that you're going to do. And again, remember your glucose is gonna be done in a large test tube. When you get over here um, to your data for the experiment, this will be a drawing, this will be your part C. Um, make sure that all of this is in ink because this is your raw data. Um, and then your instructor will talk with you about your discussion. So now just to have a bit of a visual of what's gonna happen in this experiment. So let's first talk about dialysis in general, okay? So if we have dialysis in general, as I mentioned on that first page, we have um, what's called the dialysate. And then we would have blood coming near that dialysate. All right, and between the two, we have what's called a semi-permeable membrane. So I've got a membrane with holes in it um, between those two. So this situation is highly complex. We'll draw a simple version of it, and then we're gonna make it even simpler in our experiments. So in your blood, um, you've got a lot of water, and you also have a lot of solutes, okay? Some of those solutes are big, some of them are small, um, all different sizes, um, but what you're doing in dialysis is moving those small solutes from high concentration to low concentration. And so we've got solutes moving, and that would be diffusion, right, when the solutes are moving. Another thing that we have going on during dialysis is if we have an emergency situation, maybe we have some solutes here, um, like sodium bicarbonate, for example. Um, so these would be, I could say, small solutes. And those small solutes would be able to be forced over into the blood, okay? Um, a final thing that you might have is you might also up in here have large solutes, even just something like sugar. And you can see that those large solutes don't fit through those holes in the semi-permeable membrane. And so their role is actually to suck water. So the blue here would be water. Their role is to make a high concentration on this side that makes the water want to move into the dialysate, and that effectively helps reduce the fluid volume that is in your blood, okay? So a lot of things going on here. Um, some of these small solutes might be um, things like, so such as Na plus or Cl minus, and so those are small enough to move across the membrane. All right, so we're gonna take this complex situation and like a good scientist, eliminate some of the variables and look at just one or two at a time. And so in part A, what you're going to do is we'll have a similar situation, except for instead of these kind of on top of each other, we're going to have our blood inside of the dialysate, okay? So this will be our dialysate. This will be our blood in some dialysis tubing. And um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at what if I have solutes outside of the blood? Okay, so our solutes will be sodium ions and also bicarbonate ions, okay? Um, and so 
we will initially see that the pH out here is nine because this is a base, sodium bicarbonate is a base. And then inside here where we're looking at um, the blood, we'll just put pure water, so no solutes. Um, and so we'll have solutes outside and no solutes inside, okay? And these will be our initial pHs. And so we'll wait and see what happens. But you can probably guess, right, if there's small holes in this semi-permeable membrane, then some of that solute should start to move into the blood. And so this would be proving to us this green arrow is possible, that solutes can move from outside of the blood and be pushed into the blood. All right, so that would be part A. Um, then in part B, and this is the part that you will do that won't just be a demo, we'll have this same type of setup here, okay? So again, we'll have a large beaker with some solution in it. We'll have some fake blood. We'll have the dialysate solution nearby it. Um, and this time we're gonna set it up a little bit differently. So this time, instead of looking for what can move in, we're gonna look at this pink arrow. So what can move out of the blood? Um, because that's a piece of what we do in dialysis, right? As we move things out of the blood. So we're gonna put three solutes in here. We're gonna put sodium chloride. And so those would be relatively small solutes, 5%. We're gonna put 3% glucose. Those are a little bit bigger solutes. And then we're gonna put 1% starch. And those are huge, this doesn't even do it justice, but those are gonna be huge solutes, okay? And then on the outside, we're just gonna put water. Um, and so we're not gonna put any solutes at all on the outside. And so we're gonna set this up, and we know that there are some small holes in our membrane. And so we're gonna see, well, what's gonna move across the membrane? And in both of these situations, water might be moving, but we're not gonna be detecting the water at all. So we're curious about what is going to move out into the water if anything. Since it's a dialysis lab, we think, yeah, probably some stuff will move, okay? Um, so that will be part B. And during part B, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be collecting some test tubes, okay? So test tube one will have a little bit of this initial blood in it. And then over the course of time, um, actually, sorry, test tube two will have some blood in it. Test tube one will initially just be water. And then over the course of time, we're gonna take a little bit of this dialysate out. So that will be test tubes three, four, and five. And then at the end, we will also test the blood again, and that will be in test tube six. So that will be part C. In part C, you're gonna have six large test tubes. Two, three, four, five, six. Test tubes one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and so just to kind of have this picture in your head, right, um, the first test tube is going to start as water, so this is our negative control, and it has no solutes in it at all, and you can see that, right, no solutes on the outside. Test tube two is going to be our positive control, and that positive control, as you can see, should have sodium chloride, glucose, and starch. And just because those show up doesn't mean anything moved out of the blood, right? We're testing what's in the blood to make sure it's all there. That's our positive control. Okay, and then over time, we're going to pull those little samples out of the dialyzing solution. So we're going to pull three, four, and five out of this solution. And we're looking for, does anything move out of my blood and into the surroundings? So we're looking for movement from the blood into those surroundings. And then six, we'll just be testing that blood again. Okay, so just for example, um, all of these, if they have nothing that moves, will remain negative looking like the water. But just for example, let's just say, I'm gonna put this in pencil because this may or may not be true, but let's just say that we get a positive test for starch. Okay, I'm writing that in pencil. So say we see a positive test for starch in test tube five and a negative test for glucose, okay? That would mean that starch was able to move, okay, if I come back to this picture, that starch was able to move into the surroundings and show up in test tube five. And if it was negative for glucose, that would mean the glucose was stuck inside here and the glucose did not move, okay? So that's how we're gonna start to interpret our three, four, and five. Um, and those are gonna be the most important for looking at what can move what solutes can move into 
the dialysate. All right, so that's going to be the point of those three test tubes. And because they're collected over time, so this will be at one minute, at 20 minutes, at 40 minutes, we'll also be able to get a sense of how quickly those solutes moved. So if starch moves, say, at 40 minutes, then we can say that relatively slowly starch is able to work its way into the dialysate. That may or may not be true. That's what you're going to experimentally find out. All right, so make sure that you get those... Um, the whole lab read well because there is a lot going on. Make sure you've got the um, picture drawn that kind of matches what we just did for part B here. And then finally make sure that you answer those prepare questions. And I'll see you in lab.